Is this the Blood Bath NFL Week? Road chalk all over the place. Buffalo minus four in Indy. Minnesota minus four in Jacksonville. Atlanta minus three in New Orleans. San Fran minus six and a half in Tampa Bay. Philly minus seven and a half in Dallas. Detroit minus three in Houston. Traps galore. Be careful. This is the most important NFL week of the year. It's the NFL Presidential Address for Week 10. I'm Lawrence Presman, and we're going to take apart those games and a whole lot more. Let's get straight into it. We're skipping Thursday night. New York Giants playing Carolina, doing it in Germany. And a quick public announcement to all my German friends and fans. Sorry. Sorry. You do deserve a better football game. But hey. There's money-making opportunities here. Can someone explain to me how exactly the New York Giants can be favored by more than a field goal against anybody? And I mean anybody. Like, say, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, maybe the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Yeah, they shouldn't even be favored against them. Now, I get it. Daniel Jones, he's their quarterback. You want to know how good Daniel Jones is? He had a zero passing Zero passing yards in the first half of last game. That's right. Daniel Jones, zero passing yards in the first half of last game. And he had a touchdown in the middle of all of that. I don't, I don't think that's been done since the 1970s. Anyway, I'm not the biggest Daniel Jones hater. I don't think he's the reason this team is losing every single game. I think there's a myriad of uh, reasons why. Uh including the fact that they lost their vaunted pass rush last week. I'm going to make this quick. I honestly don't care if the Giants were playing Alabama. I'm not taking them against anyone and having to give away points. If you've been following me all year, you know I like to bet on rhythm and emotions. The Giants cannot be a happy team right now. Uh, they have got to have quit inside of them. And the Panthers, well, they came into the season unhappy. So there's only up to go. And they just recently won a game against New Orleans. So we're going to take Carolina plus five. Now, before we get into the rest of the games, and we're going to do every single game on the board, I got to tell you guys, my NFL ATS bets are ridiculous. They're unbelievable. We spoke about them last week. I again won. For my clients in those bets. I went two and one in my NFL AT bet, ATS bets in week nine. I am now 48 and 25. That's 48 wins and 25 losses in my NFL ATS bets. I will have two this weekend as well. I'm also killing it in hoops over the last two years, up close to 200 units of profit for my clients in both NBA and college basketball. And my NHL is legendary. Plus in college football, I'm on a six and two run. Why am I telling you all this? Because guys, I want you to try me out for three days. That's all three days. Try me out for three days. See what my, uh, my, uh, plays are, read my analysis, learn to understand what I'm doing. And it's uh, only 39 bucks. It's literally the cost of one day for three days. Use the promo code PASS3. Please try me out for three days. I'm really good at this. I take this seriously and I win. So there you go. PASS3. Now let's turn our attention to Buffalo versus Indianapolis. Now look. This Indy team is still in it. I get it. The quotes coming out of their locker room are great, but I just don't know. They they really look bad on offense. Uh, and their defense, they're just not good enough to compensate for the lack of offense. I just don't know how they're going to keep pace with this Buffalo Bills team. Normally, taking road chalk is a bad idea. And over the long haul, a losing proposition. Plus, this is not the best spot for the Bills. They're coming off a mediocre performance against their number one rivals in Miami, and this has let down written all over it. But, and it is a big but, the Bills team are led by veterans up and down the lineup, and they want the Super Bowl. They know they cannot lose these games, and especially to teams like Indy. If Joe Flacco was so good, why is this his 70th team in five years? I get it. He went 33 for 44 for 359 yards and three touchdowns against Jacksonville about four starts ago. 
How about the other three starts, you ask? Well, they were garbage. His QPR rating is 61.9. Garbage. Regardless of who plays QB, the Colts averaged 21 points per game, and that number is skewed because they put up, up some big numbers once. They've scored 13, 20, 16, and 20 in their last four games. This line is a bit too short. The Bills, when they win, they blow out teams. They have won by 21 plus points in two of their last three games, and they have done it four times this season out of nine games. There's just no other way to take this than to hold your breath, vamote a little, and take the chalk. Now we got Minnesota going into Jacksonville. Another chalky situation. I thought this Minnesota D was overrated. I really did. But now, I don't know. I'm not so sure. I know they're not the best unit in the league, but they didn't allow one single touchdown to Indianapolis last Sunday. Not one. With that said, they did allow the Rams to put up 30, Detroit 31, and Green Bay 29. It's like when they play the best offenses in the league, they allow points. And when they play Indy, the New York Jets, Houston, and the New York Giants, they cannot be scored on. Well, which team is Jacksonville? I honestly think Jacksonville is going to find it really hard to get 17 points in this game. In the Jags' last game against Philly, without their two main wide receivers, they had 14 first downs, 60 yards of rushing in the entire game, and 155 yards in the air. The whole game. They were shot out completely the first half, and they only scored two offensive touchdowns. The Jags are done, guys. And if I have to take a side in this game, another vamote in your mouth, take Indy. But I kind of like the under here, guys. This mini team has been up and down on the score sheet. After a lights out start to the year, they have only scored 21 and 20 points and have gone through some halves getting absolutely nothing. I know this Jags D is horrible. One of the worst in the league, I get it. But I think Minnie just wants to get out of Dodge, get a win, get home. If the Jags put up 17, which is a stretch, Minnie still has to score 28 for this game to go over. Minnie has scored over 28 once in the last four games, and that was 29 against the Lions, and they needed a late-minute miracle pick six to get there. Plus, let's be honest, the Jags aren't getting to 17. The Jags' wide receiver core is Parker who, Austin Watt, and Elijah Cooks. The last two are right off the practice squad. Take Minnesota and Jacksonville under the total. Also note, the Jacks have not figured out how to start well. They were behind 22-0 to Philly, 10-0 to Green Bay, 10-0 to New England, 21-3 to Chicago, and on and on. Look to bet against them in the first half in this game. Pittsburgh, Washington. What a football game. Now, everyone, Washington, you got to take Washington here. Washington, unstoppable. Pittsburgh, mediocre. Washington this, Washington that. Guys, calm down, breathe, and listen to this. Mike Tomlin is a freaking coaching legend. And off of a bye, oh my God, he is 13 and four after a bye. 13 and 4 straight up after a bye. He's on a seven game win streak after a bye. Their margin of victory is nine points after a bye. On the road, it's five points after a bye. And now they're getting three points. Very hard not to look at that. Let's be honest here, but I just can't. I just don't believe in this Philadelphia team. And the way I'm honestly looking at that trend is it's just going to keep me off of this game. I, originally, I'm like Washington, Washington, Washington. Then I go through those Mike Tomlin trends and I, I can't bet into them. I, I just, how can you bet into those trends? I can't. This game is a pass as of Wednesday when I'm taping it. I might look deeper into it and find a total. But right now, it's a pass. Atlanta, New Orleans. The Falcons won this game, and they are in the drive. If, if, if the Falcons win this game, 
They're in the driver's seat for the division. Okay. They're already in the driver's seat. But if they win this game, they'll be the only person in the actual car. This is one of those don't overthink it games. You know how first impressions are really important? Our parents always told us, dress good, look good. You know, make a good impression. Well, the Saints did exactly that. They came out this year smoking. Beat Carolina 47 to 10, Dallas 44 to 19. And well, that was their first impression. It still lingers. They were a road dog, a road favorite of a touchdown last week. Why? They had lost six games in a row. What team loses six games in a row and is a road touchdown favorite? Has that ever happened? And then they lost. Now they've lost seven games in a row. I could go on and on and on here, guys. The bottom line is this Falcons team is coming together really nicely. They have a new coach, a new system, a new QB, and it took a little time for them to gel. They've now won five of their last six games. They've won all three road games, all three. The smart money will be on the Saints for sure. Blah, 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 blah. Division game must win at home. Second game back for Carr off of a humiliating loss. Hard to lose two games to the same team in the same year. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, wait. Did I forget to mention Dennis freaking Allen? We're taking Atlanta. Denver, Kansas City. I give up. Oh, I give up. Monday, I took the under in the KC game. I... It was like a stone cold freaking under. They needed two touchdowns in the last three minutes for it to go over. It lost. Right now, I can't win a Kansas City game I'm involved in. So, little lesson to all my fellow bettors out there. If you can't win a game a team is involved in, don't bet on that team or the game they're involved in. This is a pass. And you know what? Same with San Fran and Tampa Bay. I apologize, guys. I started the show by saying this is the bloodbath week. We're going to be careful. I'm passing in San Fran and Tampa Bay as well, but I do lean on the over in the San Fran Tampa Bay game. Um, And I am actually going to be delving deep into that over a little later on during the week, so stay tuned. New England, plus six and a half. They're playing Chicago, totally air 39 and a half. And well, We made a big bet last week against the Bears, and we were right. And this week, we would do the same. But why not take the under instead? The Bears just scored nine points against Arizona and 15 against Washington. What am I missing? New England might not have the best D on the planet, but they are middle of the pack. They're no worse than Arizona and Washington. This New England team is horrible on offense. Horrible. They had scored 10 points until the last play of the game against Tennessee. And other than one game all year, they don't even know how to break 21. I mean, good for the blackjack table, but garbage for NFL football. The most they have scored is 25, and they have gone over 17 three times all year. Now they play the Bears defense. This Bears defense is outstanding. Like really, really good. Only one team has scored more than 21 of them all year. And that was last week against Arizona. Couple of fluky touchdowns along the way. They are the fifth best team in points allowed. New England's not getting more than 17 in this game. I think they struggle to get 13. As for the Bears, their offense is brutal. Yeah, they had a few good games, but they are the second worst in the league in third down conversions, the fourth worst in the league in passing yards, and bottom half of the league in points scored. And take into account, Dennis Allen doesn't even coach either of those two teams. Okay, we'll move on from Dennis Allen. But the weather is also changing in Chicago, guys. And although it's not going to be some crappy, cold, disastrous, frigid day, the the, the field's going to be mucky. It's going to be slow. 39? Take the under. Tennessee, 
L.A. Chargers. Wait, didn't we just discuss this? Oh, no. That was Chicago and New Orleans, New England. Same game, same result. We just spoke about taking the under in New England and Chicago, and honestly, this is the same game with basically the same handicap minus the weather. Here we have two teams in the bottom 10 in scoring points and two defenses that are really good. Tennessee is first in the league, first, number one in the league in yards allowed. In other words, they're the best at stopping yards. The Chargers, they're the best at stopping points. LA has allowed 10, 8, 17, 16, and 17 points in the last five games. Why should we assume they will allow more than that against Tennessee? Do you know the teams have averaged under 13 points? Teams have averaged less than two touchdowns against this LA Chargers team. Take three points away for overtime, and Tennessee has scored 17, 14, 10, and 17 in their last four. They have scored more than 17 points once in regulation this entire season. Let's assume that this is one of Tennessee's best games all year. They come out flying for Tennessee, and they put up 16 points. The Chargers put up 21. It still goes under. What is more likely here? What is likely? Is Tennessee going to score 13 points? Yeah, maybe. Are the Chargers going to put up 21? Yeah, maybe. Ah. I think like 17-13 seems like a score to me. By the way, Chargers are 1-7 and seven to the under. And Dennis Allen is not coaching either of these teams. But you know who he should be coaching? He should be coaching Dallas. That would be a huge freaking improvement. Before we get into the Dallas game, and I have a get off your lord old man screaming at the clouds moment, Please join me for the next three days of sports betting. The promo code is PASS3, P-A-S-S-3. You get three days, all access, all my sports, college basketball, NBA, NHL, college football, and NFL. I, it's roughly around six plays a day during the week and on weekends slightly more. All my sports, three days, $39.00. Guys, try me out for three days. Give me a chance. I put a ton of work into this. Thank you. Also, make sure to like this video and make sure to comment on this video as well. I read all the comments. Okay, so I'm going to tell you guys a story I've never told on air. I grew up a huge Dallas Cowboy fan. The Cowboys and the 49ers were the only teams on television every week And Dallas became my team. I was obsessed with them. They went from Starbuck to Danny White to Jeff Hogaboom. Remember Jeff Hogaboom? To Troy Aikman, Michael Irvin. They had Tony Dorsett, Everson Walls, Too Tall, Randy White. This was my team. I painted all four walls of my room. Dallas Cowboy, blue and gray stars and stripes. I swear on my life. Then I became a pro better. And for the last 30 plus years, I could care less about the Dallas Cowboys. And thank God for that. This might be the most top-down mismanaged organization in all of sports. This is the Dallas freaking Cowboys, for Jesus Christ's sake. This is one of the most valuable franchises on the planet. What are you doing? How is Mike McCarthy your coach? Okay, enough. Let's talk about gambling. I like the over in this game. Don't don't know if I get the window here, guys, but man, Philly's offense, they're healthy now. They're playing well. They just put up 28, 37, and 28 points. Every week you can count on them throwing a couple of deep, long bombs, some 50-yard touchdown. They get chunk yards all the time, and now they play the second-worst D in all of football. I know Dak is out. CC is questionable. But they are going to get some points on Sunday. There's no other way to bet this game. This is a low total on an indoor fast track with one team that can score at will and another team that can't stop anyone. 
Let's go with over 41 and a half. Now we turn our attention to the New York Jets in Arizona. I want to bet this game. I want to bet this game so bad. I, I really do, but I, I, I just think it might be better to lay off. It really might. Uh, there's just so much going on with this New York Jets team right now. This is their season right here, right now. If they win this game, they have momentum. They still have a bye coming up later. They've still got division games. They've still got conference games. There is a pathway to the playoffs. If they lose this game, it's gone. I can't bet against the New York Jets here. But on the same hand, they really have sucked all year and are likely going to lose. Sorry, guys. It's a pass. Detroit, Houston. This is a similar handicap to the Bills game, where the better team is laying a field goal or more on the road after a huge division win. The right side, just like in the game with the Bills, from a smart money perspective, is Houston. But there is no chance I am stepping in front of this Lions team. Are you nuts? I think they're the best team in football by far. And Houston, they're not even close. And frankly, they now have all these injuries everywhere. Oh, my God. Like, seriously. But we see it year in and year out. We see it week in and week out. These great teams go on the road. They play in another against a, co a team out of conference, a team, you know, they, they got to fly to. Uh, they're let down, emotional, trap this, sandwich that. I, I, I just, I, I can't step in front of the New York Lions. Everything about this game is a letdown spot for Detroit, every single thing. But again, we spoke about this the last two weeks. Dan Campbell's the best coach in football, a master motivator, and a man that does not have letdown games very often. Aren't these all the same things we said when they were minus 12 and a half two weeks ago and they were playing the Tennessee Titans? They whooped them 52-12. I don't know if I can get here, guys. I, I, I don't know. I mean, Houston's the right side by every measure of every sports betting angle in the history of the world. I like Detroit minus the three. That's it for the presidential address week 10. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to like, make sure to comment, and please, guys, try me for three days. Pass three, P-A-S-S -S three. Three days, all access. Let's win together. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next week.